Hi, we're going to be analysing the experiment to determine the acceleration of freefall. If you remember in the experiment, what we did is we had a square piece of card which was weighted at the bottom so it would fall vertically through some light gates that we had mounted. And what we did is we dropped that card from a range of different heights above the light gate and we're going to use the light gate to determine the final velocity of the card and then use that and analyse it with an equation of uniform acceleration. So the equation we're going to use to analyse the experiment is one of the equations of uniform acceleration. It's v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared, u squared is zero, so it's just equals two times acceleration, which in this case is going to be g, assuming that g is equal to the acceleration, which it is approximately, multiplied by h, which is our displacement value. So this is our equation. It's a linear relationship between v squared and h. h was our independent variable, and v squared is going to be our dependent variable plotted on the y-axis. Now, the big mistake that people make with this experiment is the light gate, if you remember, was connected to a timer. And the big mistake is they say that time is the time that it took for the card to fall through height h. That's incorrect. The time is the time that it took for the card to move through the light beam. So when the light beam was broken, the timer started. When the light beam was re-established, that's when the timer stopped. So it's the time taken for that square piece of card to move through the light beam. Now we're assuming that it fell perfectly vertically through there, which it probably didn't, but it was very close to being very vertical. Hence, that's why we put the weight at the bottom so that it falls as vertically as possible. So that's where this equation comes in. The final velocity of the card is going to be the mean velocity as it's moving through the light beam. It is equal to the length of the card, which was five centimetres, divided by TC. That's the time for the card to move through the light beam. So that's what this equation here is for. We are determining the final velocity here, and then when we square that, that's the V squared of this equation here. Okay, so there is actually no T in the equation that we're analysing with in terms of it's not one of the equations of uniform acceleration that has t in it. So it's very important that you understand that. Okay, so here's my table here, and I'm gonna be putting the tc values in here and here for the repeat, and then this will automatically calculate the velocity of the card at that point based on the average tc value for my repeat reading here. Okay, and then over here, I'm gonna be squaring that. Okay, so let's put the length of card in here. That's where this goes. We'll input it in centimetres, and then we need to remember to convert that into metres later on. So that was five centimetres. And we need to remember when we're calculating the velocity using this equation here, that we need to convert that L value that we've inputted into metres. Right, so we conducted the experiment over a range of 10 centimetres to 60 centimetres. Here we put the TC values in, so let's put the, that data in and then we'll have a look at the subsequent calculations here. Great. So there's our TC values with the repeats there. The averages are calculated from here, so average, average. Let's have a look at the calculation here. So, so in this calculation, I, I've surrounded the calculation in an if error because um, when there's no data here, this shows up an error. So just to keep things tidy as I've explained in other videos. So what I'm doing, I'm taking the value from this data table here, the length of the card, dividing it by 100, and then in brackets, I divide that by the average TC value. So we're doing L divided by TC over there. And then that calculates the first one is 1.4, 1.9, and so on. So you can see it's getting faster. As we drop the card from increasing height above the light gate, it's getting faster, just as we would expect. Okay, and then over here, 
I'm simply squaring V. So V, and then use the carrot symbol, which is shift six, put the two in, and that will square the value. So 1.4 squared, 1.8, uh, 3.6 and so on and so forth. So we've got our v values, we've got v squared. So independent variable is here on the left and my dependent variable is here on the right. Okay, so now we scroll down here and here is the graph that we plot from that data. So on the y-axis I have v squared, on the x-axis is h, this is in metres, this is in metres squared per second squared, just as it was in the table there. And here are my data plots, reasonably straight line, um, straight trend, but you can see these two points in particular are a bit quite far away from the line, so we're getting more scatter here. Uh, it would be good to go back and recheck these values for consistency. So it's good practice whenever you do an experiment. Uh, you keep the equipment set out until you've plotted your data plots and then you can see, oh, I'm not sure if these two here, for example, are, are following the trend of all the other points very well. It's a good idea to go back and check, do an another repeat of these ones here. So that was 40 centimetres and 50 centimetres, just to see if Upon doing them again, you do get data that's a bit more consistent with everything else, because we are expecting a straight line relationship. But I haven't done that, it's good to bear that in mind in the future though. It's not too bad. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the gradient and we're going to analyse it according to comparing our equation, v squared equals 2gh, with that of the equation of a straight line, since we have a straight line, y equals mx plus c. Uh, we've assumed that, with this equation that is, we've assumed that it goes to the origin, so there is no plus C value here. Uh, you can see that actually there is a non-zero y-intercept for our data, suggesting some errors there, some sources of uncertainty. Uh, but we won't worry about that just for now. Um, that's an, an evaluation step. But in terms of the analysis, if we compare these, this equation with y equals mx plus c, so the gradient here is 18.061, h is plotted on the x-axis, so 18.061 is multiplied by the x variable, that means 2g is equal to 18.061. So that's just using the standard principles of comparing your equation with y equals mx plus c. So if we look down here, I've got some values already calculated. So this is calculating the gradient using the slope formula. So it takes uh, as its arguments, I'll leave that highlighted, takes the y data here and the x data. So these, are, these two columns are highlighted. So we've cal calculated the gradient, 18.1, just as what we had uh, up on the grid itself. Now, so if, what we're saying is that 2g is equal to 18.061, so therefore g would be equal to the gradient value, 18.1, divided by 2. And that's what I did in this cell here. Simply took this value, divided it by 2. So we get a value for g of 9.03. As you know, the data book value of g is to 3SF, 9.81. That gives us a 7.9% difference with that percentage difference. So there we go, that's the analysis. Uh, when you do that yourself, hopefully you will do that yourself, um, that's the value I got, you should get something close to 9.03. I'd like to just say a few things about the use of spreadsheets in my analysis videos. Uh, I'm a big fan of spreadsheets myself, I did an engineering degree, and I guess that's where it comes from, because uh, I really got into spreadsheets there. Um, but actually, Everybody going into some kind of technical profession um, and lots of other professions as well is going to inevitably have to do some work with spreadsheets. So I think use, learning spreadsheets is a useful skill, particularly at A-level standard. Um, so being able to do analysis with spreadsheets and build spreadsheet models, I mean, these ones are fairly basic, but these give you the fundamentals that you can build on. 
it's a really useful skill for your career as well as doing science at university. So I, that's why I do it. Um, and I hope that as you see the spreadsheet formally I use, the techniques I use here, these are fundamentals, but as you see them and you get better at them yourself, well, I hope that will help you in your future careers. There are, of course, worksheets to go with uh, most of my videos of experiments, and I recommend that you work through the worksheets. That means you're doing the work by hand. Um, you've got to learn the principles of doing the analysis before you can do it, use a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's not going to solve it for you. So um, I do, of course, and I always, with my own students, I recommend that you work through things by hand first so that you understand the principles, and then you can apply spreadsheet skills to make the problem more easy and scalable. Well, hopefully you found it helpful to see the data crunched here and don't forget to download the worksheet and work through it yourself.